Hey, hey, hey. We're going to wait for some people to join. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, family. We're just going to wait for some people to join. We got somebody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. What's up, Garfield? My man. Yo, I got to come play volleyball soon, soon, soon. Everybody's coming on. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, everybody. We're going to give uh, another minute for some more people to join. What's up, Rochelle? See you tonight. What's up, Howard? My man. I'll give it another minute. Oh, Sister Carter. How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? Maclean, what's up? All right. Hey, Pamela. Sister Reeves. All right, all right. I gotta be honest with y'all. I'm I'm really excited today uh, to be sharing uh, with you guys. We have been going through. We're gonna get started. Uh, we've been going through God's City, My City, um, six small group lessons and forty days of prayer and sharing. This is day thirty. Um, man, we only got uh, ten more days. I'm excited because. Uh, this Saturday, we're about to start uh, really impacting the community uh, with our outreach, and I'm super excited. I know you guys are as well. Uh, we are on page 92, and uh, this one is called Freedom. Freedom. Uh, let's just bow our heads really fast as we get started. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit even now to, be, to abide with us as we open your word. Give us wisdom. Give us direction. Uh, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. All right. We're going we're gonna to start at the top with this verse. Uh, again, we're on day 30, if you're following us. And we'll start at the Believe It section. Uh, the verse is from Isaiah 61, 1. And uh, it says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. We're going to read it again. Here we go. Isaiah 61.1. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. So again, we're going we're about to talk about freedom. So we're going to we're going to spend a little bit of time re reflecting on that last part to proclaim freedom for the captives. So we're going to go down to live it. Uh, we can learn three lessons from today's text. Number 1, and this one's heavy. Each of us struggles with overcoming with overcoming something. I think we can all attest to that. And then he goes on to list a lot of things. So let's let's list all these things. Drugs, alcohol, pornography, gossip, constant bad moods, work workaholism, oh mercy, inappropriate sex, irritability, materialism, legalism. I'm sure one of those probably probably hurt somebody. Uh and if your <laughs> if your sin's not listed there, I'm sure you automatically thought of one, right? That's the sin that so easily entangles us. But this is by no means an exhaustive list. There it goes. But it does tell us about the reality of being human. We're bad when we're born and we get worse. The first step to being free 
is recognize what enslaves you. Offer a prayer right now and confess your weakness before God. This is so important. Uh, before I became a sports medicine doctor, one of the things that really interested me was addiction medicine. And addiction medicine, I love it because um, there are a lot of people that are addicted to different things, and we're talking about substances, at least for addiction medicine, mostly, uh, but it affected everybody. So uh, during my rotations in med school, you would take care of a CEO of a company uh, that would be addicted to heroin, uh, and you would also take care of an 18-year-old that uh, was poor, um, that would have the same problem. And I think the church is a place and, and really just the human condition uh, is, some, is, is, really, uh, is really an experience where everybody struggles with something. Everybody has a sin that so easily entangles. Nobody's perfect. Um, Romans says, um, for all have sinned and fallen short. Of the glory of God, y'all. You guys remember that verse? That's Romans three twenty three, um, and even right before that, I'm gonna turn to it. It says, "There is none righteous, no, not one." Um, so we all have stuff. We all have problems, and even right now, I think uh, I'd like to do what what the book suggests. We're going to actually offer a prayer right now and confess our weaknesses. We're going to take 30 minutes. Um, I'm going to, uh, not 30 minutes, that's way too long. Uh, we're going to take 30 seconds uh, right now. Um, and just in the privacy of your own home, I want you to bow your heads and just confess that sin. Because it truly is uh, the first step in recovery. If you talk to any addict, uh, the first thing they had to do was acknowledge that they have a problem, right? Why do we need Jesus if we don't? Uh, if if we don't uh, sin, if we don't have a problem. So let's bow our heads right now and then I'll kind of close out uh, with quick prayer and then we'll move along, we'll move along. Let's bow our heads. Dear Father, we confess our sins uh, before you this day. We acknowledge that uh, we are not perfect and we need your love. We need your grace. Uh, and we accept the blood of Jesus that covers all of our sins uh, in the name of Jesus uh, today. In your son's name, we pray all these things. Amen. 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 I just feel like a burden was lifted right, right there. Uh, I think once you confess... Um, and repent, a burden is just lifted uh, automatically. And that's awesome. We're going to go to um, number two right now. Amen, amen. Uh, number two says, this is where you can shout right here. So each of us struggles, right? Number one. Number two is all can be set free. All can be set free. Whatever your question, God has an answer. Whatever you need, God has the solution. Whatever your wound, God has the cure. Freedom is not only for the few and the privileged, but for everyone, for you. Do you believe that? <laughs> this is crazy because uh, that other verse that, that, that I just mentioned, Romans 3.23, right? All have sinned and fallen short of the God of the glory of God. Do you know what the verse, next verse says? Uh, it says something similar to this. It says, um, and all are justified. So I think we always stop at, we're all sinners, but we also have all have the opportunity to be set free, uh, which is awesome. And I think sometimes we give sin too much credit because in reality, 
uh, our sin may be great, but grace and mercy are even greater, uh, which is awesome. And that is what is offered to us through the blood of Jesus Christ and through faith. Which also um, gives us hope uh, for ourselves, for the things that we struggle with, that, that there is um, freedom, but also our loved ones. We know uh, people that struggle with things, and sometimes you can look down on people and say, oh man, you're struggling with that, but, but really all can be set free by the blood of Jesus. And uh, that's why I think it's important too for us to acknowledge that, uh, that we all have issues too. Uh, sometimes we try and act holier than thou. Uh, but the Bible says, humble thyself on the side of the Lord and he will lift you up. Uh, we need to be humble about uh, where we came from and also praise the Lord and what, uh, what he's done for us and let other people know that uh, we struggled with things and God freed us. God freed us. We're going to move along to, to number three. Um, number three says, Freedom is a process. The Bible tells us that it may take some time from the time you are declared free, which is justification, to the moment you experience it, which is sanctification. It's like walking on dry land after being in a boat. For a while, you still feel like you're at sea, though you're really on land. It's a very real feeling, though temporary. The fact that you may still feel the effects of the chains around your ankles doesn't mean that they are not gone. You're now free. Believe it. Live it. That is awesome. That is awesome. It's a process. That's the basketball player, Joel Embiid. He says, trust the process. You guys ever heard that? They were rebuilding. They were a young team. They were losing a lot. And they asked uh, Joel, what he thought about this, and he said, "Just trust the process." I think sometimes we just need to, we need to trust the process of freedom. Um, there's going to be times as we're overcoming that we will fall, um, but remember that it's a process. Uh, I think an addict will also tell you that uh, they're always an alcoholic. They're always a recovering alcoholic. Uh, we at the church were all re recovering something, um, and I think. It, <laughs> I think it would be good for us to remember that uh, throughout the church. Nobody's perfect. Uh, we're all recovering. And this is a journey uh, that we're on to, together to freedom um, by God's grace. I also think of when we talk about the process, I think of a story that is uh, special to me uh, or, or that I think about a lot, which is the story of the 10 lepers. You guys remember the 10 lepers? So... The 10 lepers uh, heard that Jesus was coming through um, and they, they went up to Jesus as a group, as a group, and they said, man, we want to be healed. And Jesus didn't heal them uh, right away. That's right, uh, Sister uh, Yvonne, uh, who the sun sets free is free indeed, absolutely. Uh, they come to Jesus and they say, you know, heal us. And, and he doesn't, he, has, he can heal them right away, but what does he do? He tells them to go show themselves before the priest and... Um, then the Bible says, as they went, they were healed. As they started the journey, they started to heal. As they started to uh, express their faith, as they started to move, their process of freedom and healing began. Sometimes you just got to move forward, uh, move forward in life, and then things will start happening. So uh, that's what I think about when I think about the process, and we're all in it together. We're going to move along to the share it uh, section where, uh, let's read this. So so you probably know people who are battling an addiction. I think all of us know, know somebody. Uh, if you can, share with someone today your testimony of how God has set you free and offer to pray with them and for them. Yes, that's that's true, Sister Burr, and <laughs> we got to make sure that uh, when God does uh, give us that healing and freedom, uh, we have to say thank you to him because she reminded us that only one of the lepers uh, returned and said yes. Absolutely, absolutely. So today, you know, we really want to um, 
to think about this as we share it. Uh, think about your own struggles, uh, sharing your testimonies. Um, uh, I think the Bible says, uh, by the word of your testimony, uh, absolutely you will also be healed. So let's think about that uh, today. And then let's go to my prayer today. So today we're going we're gonna to pray uh, for the people that struggle with addictions. We're going to pray for those people. And we're going to pray that God will break the chains of addiction. We're going to pray that those afflicted will believe they can be free. Believe they can be free. At this time, we're going we're gonna to also take uh, request. So if you have requests, you can just type it on in. And then we're going to pray. Uh, and some chains are going to be broken. Uh, some chains are going to be broken at our at our meeting. Uh, but even today, there are people that are struggling and they can find freedom uh, even today. So uh, right now, just type in your uh, prayer request if you have any, and then we will pray together. And then I hope everybody has an awesome Monday. I'll give it a couple minutes if anybody is there. We'll definitely be praying that God continues to to. Uh, uh, move in the process of uh of getting our uh, new facility family members who struggle absolutely we'll pray for that uh, sister burr and sister carter joyce pastors and family I'll write some of these down, so. yeah pastors and family all right we're going to definitely continue to pray for our church and everything as we go, uh, as we get our new facility. All right, we're going to bow our heads. Here we go. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your son. Uh, thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for another opportunity to, to show somebody your love. We thank you for this reading, Lord, and we thank you for the freedom that Jesus offers. We ask that you free us from the sins that so easily entangle. We, we ask that you would give us the courage to, to tell other people the things that we struggle with, because sometimes it can be embarrassing. Uh, sometimes we can want to, to seem like we have it all together but help us to realize that through humility, other people can be saved, uh, which is what it's all about, uh, that other people could learn from our mistakes and uh, you may be glorified uh, in that. So we ask even today that you put somebody in our path uh, that we can show your love. We pray a special prayer for Joyce um, and the pastors uh, of our church we pray for our family members that are struggling with various addictions. Uh, Lord, we know the addiction is strong, but we also recognize that you are stronger. Uh, we know um, where sin abounds, grace uh, all the more. So we ask that grace and mercy would cover them. Uh, we ask that they would uh, no longer uh, have the urges that they have, but you would curve them with your Holy Spirit. We ask that uh, they would that you would put in them a hate of sin uh, that they wouldn't even enjoy their addiction anymore uh, we ask that you break the chains uh, even today uh, right now and we won't take any credit uh, but we'll be sure to 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 be like the one leper that uh, sister burr reminded uh, us of and we'll come and say thank you we ask that you be with us uh, the rest of this day as we go into this world uh, Helps be a blessing to somebody. Be with us as we try and impact the community with our services next week. Um, I guess starting Saturday. Uh, bless us. Help us to, to, to love on our city. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Man, I really enjoyed spending time with you guys uh, today. Um, I'll be with you guys tomorrow. Um, and we'll go from there. Love you guys. Uh, have a great Monday. And um, we'll see you guys later. We'll see you tomorrow morning.